Good morning and welcome to Thunderbird Mathematics, a brief overlook at Unit 2 of the Common Core, graphing quadratic functions. So in Unit 1, looking backwards, we talked about transformation on functions. And one of the parent functions we briefly looked at was the base parabola y equals x squared. If you think about that, when you do this, and you write it this way, g is the image of my function f under transformations. Oops, might help if I can spell transformations right. So what's that mean? Well, here's what it means. Okay. We learned that there are two sets. And transformations, if you think of the order you do them in, you relate that to order of operations. Multiplication comes before addition. So reflections and dilations come before translations. So G is F1 vertically stretched by 2 by a factor of 2 2 translated right 3 and then 3 translated up 4 The translations, you can do them in any order you want. If you think about the nice points for the parent parabola, the vertex is at 0, 0. If you go one unit right or one unit left, you have the same y value because of symmetry. x equals 0 is an axis of symmetry. And negative 2 and 2, which are two units to the right and left of the vertex, both have a y value of 4. The domain is all real numbers. The range 0 to infinity and the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Now we take an ordered pair and are mapping okay for the y's we vertically stretch them by 2 and then we're going to add 4 to go up 4. For the x's to go right 3 we add 3. So if you think about this, 0 plus 3 is 3. Okay, now I'm going to add 3, 4, 5, 2, 1, boom. Hey, 2 times nothing is nothing. You add 4, so 3, 4 is the vertex. That means the axis of symmetry is x equals 3 because it's been translated 3 right. Now. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. But since those two are the same distance from the vertex, their y values fold onto themselves over the axis of symmetry. Similarly, 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 plus 4 is 12, and these last two are 12. Your domain is all reals again. That doesn't change, but your range, since it opens upwards, is from 4 to infinity. So we can come over here now, and the axis of symmetry is at positive 3. We're not going to. Okay. Now notice the vertex always lies to on the axis of symmetry. Okay. So let's see. Four. Okay. Symmetry. Uh, and this one is. Right, that's twelve. And there. There we go. So vertex form is very easily for finding a few things. Number one, the axis of symmetry. Number two, the vertex. If the coefficient of the square, and this is always going to be called A, is positive, it opens up, the vertex is minimal. If it's negative, it opens down, the vertex's y value is maximum. Now let's take a look at our graphing technology here. And two f1 and we had x minus 3 and there we go and you can see we did it right now 
this is now going to be my parent function. So g is f. Do we have any multiplication? We do. Reflected. Since it's outside, it's over the x-axis. Translated to right. Translated one up. A major skill, and students are struggling with this, is, hey, we want to rewrite this in vertex form. Oh, okay. So you know what? I'm going to break this into steps. f of x minus 2. What does this mean? This means go into the rule for f. And where you see an x coordinate, replace it with x minus 2. So here's my x coordinate right here. But what do I do? I replace it with x minus 2. So minus 2 minus 4 is x minus 6 quantity squared plus 1. Now, if I want the opposite of f of x minus 2, that means I multiply the whole function that I just found, right? So right here, this is going to be f of x minus 2. We just found that. So I replace it, distributing the negative 1. Don't forget to distribute all the way through. And then finally, g of x is the negative of f of x, which we've already done, minus 2. And then we're going to add 1. So the negative of x minus 6 squared minus 1, there's my minus f of x minus 2 plus 1, which is the opposite of x minus 6 quantity squared. So it's just substitution, but you just have to take your time. Now, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and you try this one. All right. So g is f. 1. Vertically stretched by a factor of 3. Two, reflected over the y-axis. Remember, that's the line x equals zero. Three, okay, now let's put Humpty Dumpty back together again. This says, go into the rule for f of x. Where I see x, replace it with minus x. Oops, sorry about that. Let me go ahead and do this. So I replace it with minus x. Now we're going to use some properties from pre-algebra. So let me put those right over here. You should have learned that the square of a product is the product of the individual squares. So I'm going to factor a negative 1 out. Oops, plus 4. So this becomes minus 1 squared times x plus 4 squared plus 1, which is x plus 4 quantity squared plus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to build three times this. So, all right, now the next goal is in breaking this down is three times the function reflected over the uh, y-axis. So three times and I'm going to replace f of minus x with what its value is. Well that's x plus 4 quantity squared plus 1. So I distribute the 3 by both terms and then finally, we're going to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Oops, let me put it down here. g of x is f, 3 times f of minus x, and we're going to add 1. Well, 
where I see f of minus x times 3, I'm going to replace it with what we just found. That's what the orange box is for. And then we're going to add 1. The only two things left to do, or one thing left to do, is combine like terms, which is adding, th excuse me, 3 and 1. And I hope you come up with 4. And then we want to graph factored parabolas. Well, what's that? Well, what that is, it's either called intercept form or factored form. And in our case, since it's a quadratic, we have two factors, like y equals the dilation factor, x minus the first root, times x minus the second root. OK. So when I look at this, what do I put in this x to get 0? I put 0. So a root is x equals 0. A root is x equals 4, because 4 minus 4 is 0. Now, every parabola has an axis of symmetry. Since these are zeros, they, they have the same y value. That means the axis of symmetry is the midpoint of the line segment. If I was to draw a line segment right here, the axis of symmetry would be the midpoint. So if we add these together and divide by 2. 2, 0 is the midpoint, but more importantly, x equals 2 is the axis of symmetry. Okay. Okay. Now, the vertex always lives on the axis of symmetry. So to get the vertex, we evaluate the function at 2. So 2 times 2 minus 4. 2 times negative 2, negative 4. So the vertex is at 0 or is at 2 negative 4. Okay, now watch this. Um, and we call this f of x, right? So 2, negative 4, 0, 0. Okay, you know what? Let's put 3 in there. 3 times, well, 3 minus 4 is, mi okay, so this will be 3. 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So that's at negative 3. Okay, now I'm not even going to compute this. If I go back to the axis of symmetry and one to the left, there's an image. And now I can sketch my parabola. So we know that in vertex form, this is x minus h quantity squared plus k. Now, in our case, we have a 1 right there. So a is 1. h is the x coordinate of the vertex. And we know we go down 4, so k is negative 4. Now I could ask you, hey, tell me the transformations of y equals x squared used to obtain f of x. Well, f of x is y equals x squared translated 2 right and 4 down. Done. The mapping, if I wanted to use a mapping approach here and instead of finding a table of values, hey, 2 right. 4 down. Oh, axis of symmetry, x equals 2. Range, because the domain is always going to be all real numbers unless we're doing a restricted one. And that, in our case, it's going to be from negative 4. Because it's opening upwards, the negative 4 is a minimal value. Now, if you think about this, if you could cut this right there, if I go from minus infinity to 4, as I go from left to right, my y values are getting smaller. So the function is decreasing on the interval, open interval from minus infinity to 2. If I go from 2 to infinity, though, the y values start to get larger. So on the open interval from 2 to infinity, it's growing without bound. All right. The third form is standard form. y equals 
ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? For us, a is negative 1. What's that tell me? That means it's opening downwards. It's been reflected over the x-axis. Because of symmetry, you should remember that, um, not y, x is the opposite of b over 2a. So for us, the opposite of 4 is negative 4 over 2 times negative 1. Uh, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. So at x equals 2, Now, I'm going to do two things as I'm doing this. y equals a times parentheses x minus h squared plus k. Well, we already know a is negative 1. We already know h is 2. To find my, quote, k value, the vertical translation for the vertex, I evaluate this at 2. So f of 2 is minus 2 squared, uh, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 7, so minus 4 plus 15, I believe that's 11, so this is plus 11. So if I take the parent function y equals x squared, hey, it's going to be translated to right, reflected down, and I'm going to add 11. Okay, uh, let's see, so we're at 2, 11, and that should be right there. Okay, now I'll do this two different ways. The first way I'm going to do this uh, is with the nice table of points for the parent, okay? Because I want you to see this works. We're going to add two. That was not so painful. The opposite of zero is zero, and then I add 11. The opposite of 1 is minus 1, uh, that's 10, and that's 10. The opposite of 4 is minus 4, 4 minus 4 plus 11 is 7. Okay? That's one way you could do it. Or, I'm going to do it this way. Because I tell my students that symmetry is always your friend. You know the vertex is at 2, 11. Okay, so I'm going to look at 1, because 1 is easy to compute. That's negative 1 squared plus 4 is 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. So that means 3 also has i to 10. Why? Because they're both one unit, one unit horizontally from the vertex, the axis of symmetry. Hey, at 0, this is 7. This is 2 to the left. So if I go 2 to the right, that would have an x coordinate of 4, that also must have the same y value. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. Now where was I? Okay, 0 is at 7. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's 7, 2, 2. Okay. Uh, 8, 9, 10. And then, okay. Every form, my young mathematicians, has a strength. You just need to know how to use it. Eventually, your teachers are going to ask you, rewrite this in vertex form by completing the square. Then you're going to have to actually do different algebra. But you got this. I hope you found this helpful.